Hey everyone, it's Dr. Steve Orma, and today what I want to talk about is trying too hard to sleep and how this makes it actually harder to sleep and it gets in the way of you being able to overcome the insomnia. So one of the biggest contributors to insomnia is putting too much effort into sleep. It's, it's like trying too hard to improve the sleep directly. This is a little tricky because with a lot of things in our life, trying harder is the way to, that we improve things. So if you want to get better grades in school, you study harder, you try harder to get better grades. If you want to get better in a sport, well, you practice more, you really focus on, you know, getting better and improving your skills and you're very focused on, on, on doing that. With a lot of things, trying harder works, but with sleep, it has the opposite effect. So sleep is a very paradoxical thing, meaning that there's a lot of things that seem like they're going to help the sleep, but actually end up hurting the sleep and making it worse and keeping you stuck. And this is one of the one of the main things that contributes to insomnia is trying too hard. Let me give you some examples here of, of how this works and how this, you know, contributes to developing insomnia and also to maintaining insomnia over time. So what creates insomnia is usually there's a trigger and a trigger could be anything that starts to, to, you know, contribute to poor sleep. It could be anxiety, it could be depression, it could be a medical issue, it could be, you know, a major stressor in your life, like a, the loss of a loved one. There's so many different things that can trigger poor sleep. So then you have some few nights of poor sleep. Now, at this point, this is not insomnia. It's not a pattern of, of sleep. It is a few poor nights of sleep caused by some stressor or some issue going on in your life. This is a normal part of life and it's not a problem yet. But what happens with insomnia is the person gets really anxious uh, about their sleep. They start getting concerned because, hey, there's been a few nights where I haven't slept. So uh, in response to that, they start doing things to try to improve the sleep. They try to improve the sleep or solve the problem. And in trying to do that, the problem gets worse and that feeds into more anxiety and worry about the sleep, which makes them try harder to solve the problem. And then this cycle builds until the poor sleep switches from being just a few poor nights of, of bad sleep uh, into like a chronic pattern of insomnia. Now, what are the things that people try? Usually what they'll do is they'll first go onto the internet and they will Google, you know, how do I improve my sleep? And then what will come up is normally things like sleep hygiene. There might also be a lot of other things. Okay, so for example, with sleep hygiene, they might, um, you know, buy some, uh, like, a, like do some things to their environment to try to improve their sleep. So that might be wearing an eye, an eye mask. That might be getting some blackout shades. It might be getting a noise machine. So these are all, you know, environmental things people do for sleep hygiene to try to improve the sleep because that's what they read online, what they need to do. So they're, they're putting in this effort to try to improve their sleep. They might um, take supplements because they read online, well, supplements like melatonin or magnesium or ashwagandha or, I mean, there's a zillion of these things. Uh, I'm going to take some supplements because that's going to help me with my sleep. That's another thing they might try. And then the other one that I've talked about a lot here is medication. So, um, you know, if the problem doesn't improve, usually people will start, you know, with the internet or, you know, something like that, or just sort of what they know intuitively to try with the sleep to improve it. And then if those things don't work, then they, you know, sometimes will go to their doctor if they start getting really worried. If this has been going on for a while and all of these things they're trying aren't working, they'll go to their doctor and they'll describe what's going on. And the doctor will be like, oh, you, you, it sounds like you have insomnia. Let me prescribe some medication. And then they'll prescribe a medication for the sleep. There's a lot of different medications they might prescribe, but the point is they're going to prescribe a medication. Or you might go to, you know, your pharmacy and you get an over-the-counter remedy like NyQuil or ZQuil or Tylenol PM or Unisom, any of these over-the-counter remedies. In other words, you're going to try now a drug or a medication to help you sleep. The point is, these are the common things that people will try to improve their sleep. They'll put in effort with all these different, 
you know, um, uh, methods or substances to try to make their sleep better. And then what ends up happening is none of these things work, or if they do, it's very temporary and then it doesn't work. And then the person gets more frustrated, more anxious, uh, and more concerned about the sleep, uh, which, which just feeds back into this cycle. Now, by now, the insomnia is even worse. It's more set in because they've been you know, trying and now you're really frustrated. Now you're getting more hopeless because you tried all these different things. You put in a lot of effort to improve the sleep and the sleep has not gotten better. And sometimes it even has gotten worse and you're even more concerned. The other thing that people will do is they will actually try harder to sleep. So let's say that you're, you're you know, you get in bed to go to sleep at night and you're having difficulty falling asleep. And, you know, it's been 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so, and you're still not falling asleep. And your response to that might be, well, I just need to put in more effort, more focus. And so what you might do is just sort of, you know, really say, I'm, I really want to sleep now. And you, you turn over and you hit your pillow and you, you know, now you're going to really focus harder on trying to sleep. And this is also going to have the opposite of effect of keeping you awake. Um, and, and the reason for that is now that you're really trying to sleep, there's too much focus on it. Now, this is why this doesn't work. First of all, none of these methods, like all the methods that I mentioned, the sleep hygiene, the medication, the, the, uh, all those different types of things, they don't actually get rid of insomnia. You know, once you have insomnia, you can't get rid of it by doing any of those things because they don't go to the core issue that's causing the insomnia, which is the behaviors that you've, uh, that you've established around the sleep itself. And so these things um, don't really have any effect and they just, all they do is make you more frustrated, which then makes the sleep worse because now you're more anxious and frustrated with the sleep, which makes it even harder to sleep. The other thing is like when you're in bed and you're trying harder to sleep, you're trying to really focus on sleep, what happens is you become too conscious of the sleep. And what happens is your conscious mind starts to monitor whether you're actually falling asleep. And sometimes what happens or frequently what happens with this is even if you start to fall asleep, let's say you're just about there, all of a sudden you'll wake up because what happened there is just about when you're ready to let go and go into a sleep state, your conscious mind is still observing and it's aware of what your body is doing and therefore it'll, it'll wake you up because you haven't let go of your conscious mind. So the, the point here is that sleep is paradoxical in this way that it comes when you're not trying for it. You know, if you think about when you didn't have the insomnia before this, you, you didn't have to try to sleep. You just got into bed. It was your bedtime. You turned the lights out and, and you went to sleep, right? Because you weren't thinking about it. You weren't trying to sleep. You were, you were just ready for sleep. And then you got into bed and you just, and it just happened because you weren't putting any attempt or any focus on it. You just had this assumption within you, this confidence that you were going to sleep and you ended up sleeping. And so, or you might have had the experience of you are a passenger in a car or you're, you know, you're listening to a boring lecture, uh, at, you know, in a class and or you're in a boring meeting and you're and you're just you're, you're starting to nod off like it's hard to actually stay awake because your body just wants to go to sleep you're not thinking about sleep you're not trying to sleep you're just your body is 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 too is tired and it's relaxed because you're bored or because you're not there's nothing stimulating going on in your body and it just naturally um, starts to fall into a sleep state so sleep is not something that we have to try to create it, it's built into our system. It comes automatically. It comes effortlessly under certain conditions. And the key word here is conditions. Under certain conditions, sleep comes automatically and effortlessly. And so what we don't want to do is put effort into creating sleep directly, but creating the conditions that will automatically and effortlessly lead to sleep. So sleep is one of those things. What you want to do is think of sleep as a result. It's something that comes automatically and effortlessly when there's certain conditions in place and it, it'll, then it just comes. Okay. It's kind of like money, you know, like 
Sometimes when someone is trying to make money or make more money, they put all their focus on the money and they're really focused on the money. And then what happens is they don't end up making more money or sometimes they end up making less money because they're, they're so focused on the money, on the outcome, on the result that they end up creating the opposite result because they get too tense and they're not focused on the things that actually lead to making the money, which might be, you know, finding a new job, which might be trying to get more customers. If you're running a business, it's putting the focus or, or like, how can I create more value in the world? When you put your focus on the things that result in money, then money will come automatically and effortlessly without you even trying. So that's kind of how sleep works. Sleep just comes automatically and effortlessly when you're focused on the conditions or setting up the conditions that will lead to it. What we do through the process, and this is the process that I've described, um, which is called CBTI. It's the, the gold standard process for, for getting rid of insomnia. But basically, the way that you do it is we undo the conditions that created the insomnia, that are maintaining the insomnia, and that is really particular behaviors around your sleep. These are behaviors that are feeding into the insomnia and then maintaining it, and usually without you even knowing that you're doing it. So that generally is just things like when you're getting into the bed, how much time you're spending in the bed, and in particular, how much time you're spending in the bed awake, not sleeping. That's ultimately what feeds the insomnia. And um, it's other things like the anxiety and the worry that feed the insomnia as well. We need to address those things. So these things are called poor sleep behaviors or negative sleep thoughts. And these two together are what create the, the insomnia and what keep it in place. And to undo it, we need to stop. You need to stop doing those things. You need to learn how to shift the mind um, in a different way. So you're not feeding these like... Um, these thoughts that are creating a lot of these um, upsetting emotions that are stimulating. And then you also need to shift your behaviors back to what you were doing before, which you weren't even probably aware of or thinking about, but that automatically will lead to that really good sleep. So we're removing the conditions, the behaviors and the thought processes that, that lead to poor sleep or interfere with sleep, hence, the, hence insomnia. Um, and replace them with behaviors and thought patterns that are going to break that pattern of insomnia and establish or reestablish a healthy pattern of sleep. And then we want to strengthen that over time as well through, through those conditions. So when someone's going through this process, like when I'm working with a client to help them overcome their insomnia and they're going through that process, we are, they are putting in effort and they are trying right? You can't just lay back and do nothing and hope that the insomnia goes away once it becomes a, a set pattern, you know, once it becomes an ongoing pattern um, in your sleep system, you can't just sort of be passive about it. You do need to put in effort, but you need to know where to put in the effort and where to try and where not to. And where you don't want to try is the things I mentioned in the first part of, of the video here and where you want to put all of your focuses on implementing this this treatment process and the four key behavior shifts that are gonna that are actually going to set the conditions for good sleep so that's what we're doing when i help when i uh, help someone through this process is i'm teaching them the key skills in terms of their behavior and in terms of their mind their frame of mind that will over time break the pattern of insomnia that will eliminate the insomnia but reestablish a healthy pattern of sleep without them even trying to do that because your body is is built to sleep and you know as long as you don't get in the way of that then it'll sleep just like it did before you had insomnia the only thing that gets in the way is us, you know, and it's, you know, it's, we do it unknowingly, you know, no one knows, no one does this deliberately, but they do it unknowingly and then they're doing it to maintain it and they don't even know they're doing it generally and they don't know how to get out of it, right? So we get them out of it by having you focus on the things that will set the conditions that will lead to the sleep. So you're putting all your effort into these sort of four key behavior shifts 
and no effort into trying to sleep and no effort into anything that doesn't really work until the insomnia is gone. And then as a result, over time, automatically the sleep starts to get better on its own. It starts to improve. It starts to, you know, the insomnia pattern starts to go away and the, the sleep improves until we get you past that. And then we strengthen that. And then you learn how to maintain that indefinitely because now you know how to set those conditions that will lead to sleep, um, you know, for the rest of your life, which is really a powerful thing to, to understand. Okay, so to summarize today, trying to sleep or putting in a lot of effort directly to try to sleep um, will have the opposite effect. It will, it will make sleep harder to get. It'll make your sleep worse, particularly if you're trying the, these methods that don't work that I mentioned, or if you're just literally trying to sleep harder at night where you're really putting in like a more effort to try to fall asleep, it's going to have the opposite effect as well. And instead, the focus needs to go on key behavior shifts and shifting the mind frame in a certain way that will automatically over time improve the sleep and ultimately get rid of the insomnia and get you back to a healthy pattern of sleep. All right. So uh, I hope you found this video helpful today. If this is something that you found that you're that yourself that you're that you've been engaging in. And um, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comment section. I read all the comments. And if I see like a good question there, um, then I might do a video as well just for, for, for you for that question. Um, if you like this video and you found it helpful, just press the like button and you can also subscribe to my channel. And uh, I hope uh, you have a good rest of your week and I'll see you next time.